Hey Junior, let's get ready. We are going with Uncle Tay. Miss Khan slash Mrs. Pin exclaimed. Are you ready, Cutie, to spend the whole evening with me? Ah, it would be our first outing. No, Mom, no, Dad, only Nona and Junior. Are you excited, Junior? Miss Kang spoke while cursing Junior. Miss Kang was preparing Junior for their vaccination tour to SMOPD. Meanwhile, they was looking at her. For no reason, Yungi casually raised his face and looked at Tay, whose eyes were fixed on his newly married wife. Yungi almost burst out laughing. Tay, don't say that you are being affected by Granny's blabbering. My son is not gonna make you feel jealous. I have always liked it, the way she takes care of Junior. She is very careful when it's about that little kid guy, who's not gonna make me feel jealous anyway. Uncle Tay doesn't have so much time. We have to go now. We will cuddle later, okay? Miss Kang pressed a peck on Junior's cheeks and they just thought how effortlessly his wife never felt to make him feel jealous with a baby who did just random actions like any babies of his age do. We are ready, Uncle Tay, for our first minute with you. Yay! Miss Kang mimicked in baby voice. They looked at her with an uncertain look and looked at Yugi who was also getting ready for his evening duty. Yeah, we are ready. Yugi pressed a peck on Junior's cheek. Be a good boy, Junior man. Miss Kang held Junior's hand to wave his father. They walked towards Tay's car and she secured themselves in the passenger seat. And they started the engine. Yeah, the driver was not quiet. Even though they kept glancing at the passenger seat from time to time, but the passengers were in their own world, in their own dimension. Mrs. King, yeah, his very own wife, didn't miss a single second to pack the little boy, to cuddle him. Can you please stop teasing him? They finally used his voice. I guess you are the one who is driving? Mrs. King chuckled casually. Why don't you put him to sleep? He's gonna have to go through the after effects, they advised. Mrs. King Wen glanced. You are right, indeed. And you were hurt. You forgot to cover up your all wounds properly. They spoke in a cold voice. When wanted to avoid his dark gaze, which she was unable to avoid, though they wasn't looking at her. My duty, you should sleep now. Otherwise, your uncle will be angry. Junior used to sleep after eating. The slow window through the half-down car windows and the journey. Mrs. Kim didn't have to put a lot of effort and Junior was already asleep. She just tried to mold her upper body in Junior's comfortable position, hold him properly. Yeah, one's husband has issues how Junior was attached to her chest. They just sighed. He was aware of the fact that Junior was just a kid, but the woman who was holding the kid was none other than his married wife and, like any other normal straight person, he also wanted to enjoy the newlywed romance, though he was quite unsure from where he should begin as when he had to sign the papers under special circumstances. They knew when wasn't an easy book to read. She would try her best to hide the feelings she had for him. She had spilled her thoughts whenever she had spoken without thinking anything, and whenever it was about they, and it was always overwhelming to him. They sighed before stepping on the pedal brake. I think we need a cable. Junior is still sleeping and we won't be able to leave for home right after the vaccination. What do you think, Ben? Mrs. Kim Wen. Will it be okay to use other doctor's cable? What if the doctor thinks that we used his personal cable for our baby's comfort? 
it might cause a misunderstanding. Say, I am substituting his duty. But even if any colleague of mine uses my cabin for their family's personal comfort, then there is nothing to misunderstand. Isn't it normal? They got out of the car and rushed to the other side to open the car door for Grant and Junior. He's awake. Well, yeah, seems like that. She flushed a pack on Junior's cheeks. I saw you were smiling. How was your nap? Did you see me in your dreams? They looked at her with, I'm so done with you look. But soon he realized one got some minor injuries during the conversation with Mr. Lee and had been taking care of the toddler without moaning in pain, even without sighing. If he were tired, I can carry him. I know how tiring the OPD duties are. I am good with them, she replied. Well replied and led Tay to lead her on the way to OPD. I think Junior would prefer to look around the hospital compound. Do your duty. We will be playing for some time and then I will take him to you. How's the plan? When casually suggested. Are you not tired? They asked. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I have promised you to help but I need to take care of Junior. And I'm your assistant for the semester so you can use the help coupon anytime. Gwen smiled at him. Don't worry. I'm going to redeem the coupon soon. They grinned before heading into the OPD section. Gwen took Junior into her arms and started wandering around. Gwen was in the hospital compound playing with Junior when she remembered that she has been asked to vacate the dorm. Junior, let's go to Nuna's dorm and we will request the warden auntie to give me some time. Fortunately, the warden was aware of the situation of Kang Wen. She informed her one of the professors had already requested the authority to pack up her belongings in order to empty the room she had approved. Bidding goodbye when left from the dormitory area with Junior. She had been working hard since she moved into Seoul and the first time she was expelled. She felt quite down and hugged Junior more tightly. I'm sorry Junior. Nuna will work harder from now. And she felt her phone would be vibrated inside her pocket. It was incoming call from Taehyung. When? Yeboseyo, Te. I know it's an old joke, but you could cut the seyo off. When felt the sound of smile through the phone call. Te, where are you? When? Oh, we we went to the dorm to meet the warden. Te. Ah, there is only the two last apartments left, and the second last name is Min Junior. Please come to the OPT section as soon as possible. Nay. Nee. After disconnecting the phone call, Gwen took Junior into her arms. Let's go to Uncle Tay's cabin, Junior. Gwen knocked on the door of Tay's cabin. May we come in, Dr. Kim? Tay. Please come in, Junior and Dr. Kim. Gwen looked around but there was nobody except them. She was quite blank as she didn't find Dr. Kim. They was going through Junior's file when they entered into the cabin. Oh, Dr. Kim, let Junior play here. You wash up first. They stated in a normal tone. When did as they asked, she made Junior stand on the ground. The cabin was quite spacious and the interior was quite familiar. So, for the toddler, it wasn't an unfamiliar place. He started wandering around the cabin. Hey, Dr. Kim, what are you waiting for? One looked around the cabin and then looked at Tay but didn't dare to ask him anything. Tay, Dr. Kim ran, go and wash up first. When fringed at her position as she heard the name, Dr. Kim ran. And in no time, her cheeks blushed in the bright shade of crimson. She pointed her index finger towards her own self and stammered. Me? Hmm? 
they didn't fail to recognize the blush on her cheeks. Aren't you Dr. Kim? Please go and wash up. Don't waste time. I have another appointment. When I wanted to avoid eye contact with Kim, she went to the wash cabin and washed her hands after taking off her overcoat. There was an apron hanging on the clothes hanger with the nameplate Dr. Kim. She was about to step out of the cubicle when she heard this voice. It's your apron. Don't forget to put that on. When thought, Junior was the second last appointment for the day. He had only one appointment left. It was just OPD, so why does he told me to put on the apron? Isn't it your nameplate? When asked they as she stepped out of the wash cabin, they smiled while taking off his apron. That's my apron, my t-shirt, my trousers and last but most importantly, my wife. When tried to not to react but her ears turned red and her cheeks followed her ears. They noticed that. Go, prepare the vaccine. You mean to say, when gulped down, then I'm pretty sure you will not be able to hold him properly and he is more familiar with you. You are the preferable option between us. When I can't make him cry, then it's about his immunization, Mrs. Kim. They looked at Junior and took a seat beside him. She is not a Nuna. You should call her aunt, Junior. Junior nodded and giggled having his uncle there beside him, but the toddler's eyes were fixed on Ben. He crawled into Thay's lap and put his head on Thay's chest. It was clear that Junior wanted Thay to save him from the shot one was preparing for him, but the way the baby wanted to secure himself in Thay's embrace hit differently. Junior looked at Thay with teary eyes and his grip on his shirt was getting tighter. It's for your immunization, Junior. They tried to console the toddler. Come on, Thay. Is this how you are going to console him? When raised her voice while taking the cap off the vial and cleaning the rubber top with alcohol pad. There was a pin drop silence in the cabin for a few minutes. They didn't know how to console the toddler and as a professor he needed to know how much efficient his assistant was. When hold the syringe like a pencil with the needle pointed up. With the cap still on, she pulled back the plunger to line on the syringe for dose, filled the syringe with air. She inserted the needle into the rubber top, without touch of bending the needle, and gently pushed the air into the vial. When turned the vial upside down and hold it up in the air, keeping the needle tip in the medicine, gradually she pulled the plunger back to the line on the syringe for the dose. Now it was time for remove the air bubbles from the syringe. Keeping the syringe tip in the medicine, she tapped the syringe with her finger to move the air bubbles to the top. Then pushed gently on the plunger to push the air bubbles back into the vial. While looked at the toddler who was known to the fact that he's gonna get a shot. He wanted to cry but somehow the man hidden inside him stopped him from breaking down in front of a beautiful doctor like Van. And Van noticed that. Van finally spoke. Dr. Kim, I have prepared the shot, please. I don't think I'm strong enough to. They chuckled. You know, Dr. Kim, you are strong enough to face a man like Mr. Lee. You are strong enough to hide all the pain from the minor injuries and scratches you got during the special conversation between you and Mr. Lee. Bandits temporarily hurts all the scratches, but when sight, they stop. Hold him properly. I can take care of my own. I just hope I am not the last patient. I will do it in the home. Don't worry for me. They looked at her. Yeah, his anger was triggered. Why do you want to give him the shot and why? When gulped down as she was caught being wounded by Thay. 
though she didn't think that they were gonna spend the night in the same house. For toddlers, the anterolateral thigh muscle is preferred and when this side is used, the needle should be at least one inch long. The deltoid muscle can be used if the muscle mass is adequate. If two vaccines are to be administrated in a single limb, they should be spaced an inch apart. The young nodded. Why did you dress up him like this when you knew that he's gonna get a shot? He scolded her while taking off Junior's full length trouser, but one couldn't break the eye contact with Junior. I'm sorry, Junior. I love you, cutie. This is for your better immunity, my boy. When cleaned, the muscle below the greater trochanter and above the lateral femoral condyle. Her eyes were about to pull up, but she controlled. She inhaled deeply and, holding the needle like a dot, she inserted that into the muscle at 90 degree angle in a quick yet controlled manner. Carefully, she pushed the plunges slowly to inject the medication into the muscle. She withdrew the needle quickly and discarded that into the puncture-resistant sharp container. Teo was impressed by Vine this time, as Junior almost forgot to cry. The toddler was so confused with the everything that happened to him in last few minutes. They gently pressed the injection site with a piece of gauze while Vine was into the small cubicle allotted as washing area. Gwen quickly washed her hands and took off the apron. Can I take him? They smiled a little and gestured her to sit beside him. So, you wanna play with Junior? Gwen looked at him with a smile. He didn't cry, he deserves this, Dr. King, and I promise, I will do the dressing after dropping him in his home. They smiled. Luna is in the way to take him with her. Gwen said, Junior, Mama is coming. We will be detached again. Then, if you want, I can ask Luna. Gwen stopped him. I know my limits, Dr. King. And I'm also aware of the fact that Junior needs his mom. They nodded. I know this man in your life is super adorable, but still, I want to ask this question. Why do you love him so much? And Mrs. Ming entered into the cabin with a warm smile on her face. Cause our junior is too cute and Nuna thinks he is her custom-made sleeping pill. Junior's eyes brightened immediately seeing his mother. He almost jumped into her lap. They, did he cry a lot? They smiled. He didn't cry at all and all the credit goes to Van. Mrs. Min glanced at Van. Pinky told me what happened. I know how difficult it is to tackle but I thought I at least deserved a single message from Van. Van flinched. Uh, uh, me? I thought you didn't know about my stepfather. That's why I... Mrs. Min had to breastfeed the little monster in the middle of the argument. Mr. Lee, he is a regular, normal employee of Mill Group. There are many employees who are better than him, yet I don't know them, but definitely you could inform me about the marriage. Tehan, I know how stupid your wife is, and I know her. Nothing exists for her if she is around Junior. You have my number, right? Why didn't you inform me? Do you have any proper excuse? Have you prepared any? Don't dare to act cute, Tehan. Mrs. Min almost scolded him, but she knew it was just a normal hospital greeting. I thought it was an emergency. She is still studying and it was just court marriage and I was thinking to have a proper marriage and wanted to invite you. They pouted in the cutest way but his plan gave Van goosebumps. On me, 
Junior didn't cry doesn't mean his body doesn't need rest. They have no more patience for me today. What are we waiting for? Let's go home. When try to change the topic. Mrs. Min smiled. You were right though. You must go home early. I have planned some surprise for you. Wen looked at the pale face of nervous Wen. Junior, come on. Let's go home. He took the toddler into his arms. Nuna, it's almost 8 p.m. We should leave. Mrs. Min nodded. They handed Wen a frosted kit before leaving the cabin. Wen gave him a what is this look, but they ignored her and walked towards the parking lot. Oh, when he fell asleep, Nuna, I must say. I am impressed by this little guy. He is so understanding. No doubt he got the best parents in the world. They praised Junior while securing him in the child seat in Mrs. Min's car. All credit goes to your wife, Tay. She has done everything, and particularly about his good habits, it's his Nuna. Oh, sorry. I must say his aunt. Mrs. Min chuckled while securing herself in the driver's seat. After Mrs. Min left, they looked at Wen. For some unknown reason, she was looking frightened. I don't eat humans, and you have stayed with me under one roof. Wen cleared her throat. Mrs. Kim, I mean, your mom messaged me that she herself would come to your apartment. Did you ask her for something? Oh, last summer I randomly shopped some clothes, but those didn't fit me. Now I have you, and you have no clothes in my place. You were busy all day, and Mom had some work in Seoul. It was a win-win situation, so she gestured her to sit on the passenger seat. You know. Nuna told me that she had prepared some surprise in her apartment. As long I know her, she must have prepared something. When secured herself in the passenger seat, they grinned. What do you mean by something? When gave him a, I'm so done with your look. You will find soon. I just didn't want your mom to witness this something when I prepared for us. For us. He chuckled. When will you give me a word? Everything I own, all the documents of my property are kept with you. After that, may I have something to give you? When looked at, they whose eyes were fixed on the girls. Yes or no? They asked. Though I have nothing to give, nothing to lose, so the answer is yes. When answered. Take off the bandits one by one. You have almost five minutes to do that. They glanced at the passenger seat. What if I don't listen to you? What will you do? Wen casually asked. Mrs. Kim, don't forget, I can do that too. It's not that hard. I just don't want to go against your wishes. They chuckled. The rest of the time, his eyes were fixed on the road while Wen tried to gasp silently as she took off the bandits one by one, and she was done with the procedure before the rest. Will you be able to walk? They asked as he parked the car. What if I say I can't? Don't I have to walk? Wen asked as she could feel the pain. I don't mind to carry you. They was interrupted. No, thanks, Abby. You could give me extra two minutes so that I could at least reach to your apartment. When hissed in pain. Wifey, are you angry? On the first day of our marriage, to dilute the situation, they kissed her cheeks. Isn't it normal to get angry on the first day of marriage if someone, well, not someone, but the Husband himself says something like that. Wen tried to breathe in, breathe out to ease the pain. Don't dare to touch me. 
I will not but mom is now at our place. Please behave like normal couple. You can show me the angle later and I promise. I will tolerate but please not in front of mom. They requested. I nodded and followed them to their apartment. Go wash up first. They put the frustrated kid on the nightstand after entering into the bedroom. Mom is not here. Can I use the guest room, Swan? When asked, they knew her wounds and scratches were being rubbed with the clothes. Though he didn't want to let her to use the guest room, but he didn't want to get into another argument. You don't need to ask me. You can use if you are comfortable there. Go. I will go to your room after washing up. When nodded and went to the guest room, 